The practice for topic one, graphing radical functions and analyzing their transformations. So I've listed the steps that I want you to take out in blue right here. And again, your goal is it the mastery section, five out of five correct, or at least the doing well section of four out of five correct. I'm gonna do one of these and then I'm gonna have you do the remaining five on the next two sheets. So I'm gonna do the number two right here. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about Number one and the bottom left one down here as well, the other number one, just because they're a little bit different. Um, the steps are the same for all of this. It's just the negative sign out front of the first number one and the second number one do something different to the graph, the rule that exists there. But let's begin. And again, I want you to follow step by step just like I do this so you can ensure that you've mastered uh, the topic that the way that it's necessary to do this. All right. So the first step, and again, number two, if I was going to read it, y equals the square root of x plus four plus two, I would notice two things. First off, there's two numbers with the x. One of them is inside the radical, and that tells me something important. And one of them is outside the radical. So again, inside means something different than outside. But before we get into that, the first step is to determine the parent function and its vertex. Remember, we talked about parent functions in the first objective of this, there's two parent functions. There's the cube root right here and the square root right here. All right. And so this case, the first step, and I'll write it right down here. The parent function for this one is y equals the square root of x. And the vertex for this, same with the vertex for cube root, is 0, comma 0 the x and the y. Now that's very important because that's going to help us determine the transformation here in just a little second. So I'm done with the first step. Found the parent function and its vertex. Now I have to find the vertex of the given function and then plot that vertex point. All right. So this is why I said it was important to notice that there's two numbers. One's inside the radical, one's outside. I'm going to draw a barrier. And remember, everything I say to the left is lying to you. I'm going to write that. And to the right is telling the truth. So, and remember in vertex form, the form of that is y equals the square root of x minus h plus k. So the h values are on the inside, the k values are on the outside. So this means that the h value is 4, or negative 4, and the k value down here is 2. So the vertex, then, is the h and k, but remember the h value is lying to you. So the second step is to identify the vertex of my new function, and the h value and k value. The h value is a positive 4, x plus 4 in the function, but I know it's lying to me, so it's a negative 4 in my vertex. So the x value of this vertex is a negative 4. And then the k value is telling the truth, and that's a positive 2. So I found my vertex of negative 4, comma 2. At this point, I'm going to plot it on my graph up here. Negative 4 up to 2, right there. Done with step 2. Found the vertex and plotted it. Now I get to draw a simple sketch of the new function based off of its vertex. All right. Again, the sketch isn't as important to me as just knowing where the vertex has moved and then knowing the transformation based off of that. But if you remember, a positive, remember this is positive, a positive radical function goes up and to the right forever. And it goes up, it goes over 4, up 2, then over 9, up 3. So something like that. I said over 4 because the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So something that looks like that is a rough sketch. Up and to the right forever. So I have drawn it. And again, the sketch doesn't have to look perfect. I care more about steps 4 and 5 now as well. So step four says describe the transformation in words. So we can plot the vertex of the parent function right here. It was zero, zero. And if you notice, it went to the left four spaces and up two spaces. So that's all I need to say there. 
left four spaces, up two spaces. And I'm done. That's why it's so important to find the vertex and remember the vertex of any parent function because that helps us to discover what the transformation was based off that vertex. I can either look at it graphically like I just did or actually look at the vertex of my new. Negative four is left four spaces from zero and two is up two spaces from zero for y. So I've done step four, left four spaces, up two spaces, and then finally, so check that off, and then finally find the domain and range. This is technically the new learning, but it's pretty straightforward as well. And if you remember, it's all based off of the vertex, all right? The x and y value of the vertex. So the domain, if you remember, is, and when I think of domain, I think of x values and x axis, all right? Another way to think of that, domain and range, think of the letters D and R. D comes before R, and then you think of the x and y axis, x comes before y, so d and x are paired together. Just another way I think about that. So the domain, two ways to write it. I have to include, though, that first number. And remember, if I look at the graph now that I just plotted, it's all based off of its vertex. The leftmost point is that blue dot I just drew. And that leftmost point is negative 4 and then 2 for the y value. But this is the x, this is the y. And I care about the x value for my domain. So the leftmost point, I have to draw a bracket because that tells me that it includes negative 4. And from algebra 1, you should remember that it includes it because the dot is closed there. If it was open, it wouldn't include it, and then it would be a parenthesis. But it is closed, and so I have to include negative 4, so I have to draw a bracket. And then it goes on, if you remember, going up, scrolling up a lot. It goes on forever in the rightmost direction, so it goes to positive infinity, and I close it up. All right, that's one way to write it. The next way is, this is interval notation, what I just showed you. This now is going to be inequality notation. So I'm going to write x for all of my x's. If you look here, all of my x's, they're going to exist greater than or bigger than or equal to, it can be equal to negative 4, but it has to be bigger than negative 4 as well because they're positive going in the right direction. So it's going to be x is greater than or equal to. Remember, the greater than sign eats the biggest thing, and so greater than or equal to negative 4 because, again, all of my x values are going up and to the right from negative 4, mainly to the right. I don't care about up for x values. So all of my x values are going to the right of negative 4, so they're all bigger than negative 4. So I'm done. I've listed both my ways to write the domain that I want to see. And range is very similar. I'll do this in a different color, though. Range, if you remember, is not the x values, but the y values. So the, because this graph goes up and to the right, it, this range is going to play out this way. If you notice, this number 1 and the number 1 down here, they're negative. So I'm going to talk briefly about that in just a little second, because that's going to send it down and to the right, so it changes the range. But in this case, this is how I would do the range. Again, I would identify the vertex right here, and I would use the y value now. The lowest point, the basement, because again, the, the range is from the basement to the ceiling, so I have to list the lowest point first. The lowest point is my y value, because the range is y values, the y value of 2. So I include two there because that dot is closed. And in this case, this arrow goes to the right forever, but it also goes up forever as well. So it goes up to positive infinity. Parenthesis that, because we don't include infinity. And then let's talk about the other notation, inequality notation. I'm going to say for all of my y values, if you notice, this graph goes up forever as well. So all of my y values have to be bigger or equal to, because that dot is closed, remember, so bigger or equal to 2. So all of my y values have to be greater than or equal to 2, because it goes up forever and it includes 2, the basement. So I'm done. I found everything. I've done one through step 1 through 5, so I need your work to look exactly like this. Please label it like I've labeled it. 
And please show your work exactly like this so I can make sure, and you can make sure that you've mastered this topic, all right? Now, before I end this video, I want to talk briefly about the domain of domain and range of something that's negative. So I'm going to just do this number one really quick, and I'm going to plot the vertex. In this case, the vertex of this function is negative 5, comma, negative 3. This is an ex expectation. I still want you to try this one, but I'm just going to do it quickly. And so I want you to actually think through all five steps for this one as well. But negative 5, comma, negative 3, so I'm going to plot that down to there. Now, this minus sign, instead of going, so don't draw this, but this minus, instead of going over 4, up 2, then over 9, up 3, instead of going up like that, the minus sign sends it down and to the right because it flips over the x-axis. I know I already shifted this over left 5, down 3, but it's still going to flip about the x-axis. So it's going to go down and to the right. So an easy way to remember that is whenever you plot your vertex, if the function is negative, which this one is, you can still go over 4, but instead of going up 2, you want to go down 2 when you draw this because it flips. So I'm going to go over 4 again, but then down 2, then over 9, and down 3, and draw it that way. All right. Now, after I've drawn this, so I've skipped steps 1, 2, I just skipped step 1, I guess, because I did step 2 and then step 3, I drew it. Um, and I talked about shifted left 3 and down 3 as well. After I've drawn this, the domain and range are going to look a little bit different. Mainly the range. The domain is going to be very similar to the process you always take. I'm going to include this closed dot, which is my vertex, negative 5, negative 3, my x value, my y. So I'm going to include negative 5, and it still goes to the right forever. So it still goes to positive infinity. All right. So x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So the domain is the same process, but the range is a little bit different. The range now, the top and the bottom have switched. Because if you notice, the vertex usually, like the vertex over here, was the floor. Now if you notice, the vertex is the ceiling. It's the highest point vertically. Because this is going down forever. It's going down forever. So my lowest point is now going to be the forever representation of negative infinity. Because it's going down forever. And then, because it, it's kind of counterintuitive, because it's going in this direction to the right, so we're technically working backwards as well. But this is the lowest point, down forever, negative infinity, all the way, and then I have to include the ceiling this time. And the ceiling is my y value of my vertex, negative 3. And so, the inequality notation looks a little bit different too. In this case, all of my y values are going to be less than negative 3. So y is going to be less than or equal to, because that's a closed dot, so always equal to, but it's going to be less than or equal to negative 3. So the range looks a little bit different, if you can tell the difference between that range and this one. It just switches the basement and the ceiling. So go ahead and try the remaining number 1, and finish out number 1 that I just did with the negative. So try that one on your own too and then the three on this page, all right? And please make note, too, this is a cube root. So the parent function of a cube root looks something like that. So just draw the vertex in the transformation. Just draw a quick sketch of that. And then remember, this negative, when it's a cube root, It'll flip it, but because this is odd, it doesn't change the way that it looks, all right? So go ahead and try the remaining ones.